Hello and welcome to Monster Monday. Today I'm going to be delving deep into some older material from the third edition Monster Manual. Why? Because sometimes older ideas are pretty cool and you could kit bash them and change them around and find interesting ways to use them in your new campaigns. So, on today's episode, we're going to check out the Ethereal Filter. All right, if you're following along in your awesome vintage copy of the third edition Monster Manual, this is on page 87. The Ethereal Filter is a medium-sized aberration. What I like about this is that it's a sneaky creature. You know how sneaky creatures work, right? 5d8 hit points. It's listed in third edition world as a challenge rating 3, so not necessarily something that's going to kill your low-level party, but could be an interesting challenge, and they have some cool... Uh, kind of abilities and origins. They have a speed of 40 feet, which is actually pretty fast. Uh, armor class of 17. They have a bite attack. Um, they have a reach of 5 feet. Special qualities are ethereal jaunt and detect magic. Um, and then they have improved initiative. Uh, climate terrain, any land or underground. Yeah. Um, we'll get there in a second. Uh, they are solitary creatures, which means they hunt on their own. But remember that we can always change what the book says. And if you need to use multiples of these to make an encounter that's more challenging, you can absolutely do that. Let's get into the lore so you guys understand a little bit more about the ethereal filter. So ethereal filters are bizarre looking creatures with a penchant for snatching trinkets from passersby. Their ability to move quickly between the ethereal and material planes makes them spectacular pickpockets. So right off the bat, these things aren't meant to be like, kill you necessarily. They're more, um, more kind of a, a special interest encounter that could lead to other things, which I think is what makes them interesting and, and gives them more flexibility in terms of how you can implement them. Ethereal filters dwell on the material plane where they stuff layers with all manner of refuse. They prefer secluded, inaccessible spots such as the bottoms of abandoned wells or mine shafts, alpine caves, or the basements of ruined buildings. So again, right there, totally flexible, very versatile. You could put these things almost anywhere as a fun sort of encounter with your party. A filter looks like a creature from a nightmare. It's four and a half feet tall and has a bag-like body with a thick neck and a bulbous head. It has four long arms and a single leg that ends in a prehensile foot. It is pearly gray overall with metallic blue and turquoise markings. Ethereal filters do not speak. And again, I think the art on this by itself is inspiring, to say the least. Combat. An ethereal filter lurks on the ethereal plane, waiting for a likely mark. Upon locating one, it shifts to the material plane, attempting to catch its victim unawares. The creature attempts to snatch an item, then retreats quickly back to the ethereal. It is not above delivering a bite to distract its target. Once it secures a trinket, it scurries back to its lair to admire its prize. When badly wounded, the filter escapes rather than continue the fight. Any number of simple rule ruses can blunt a filter's attack. Quick-thinking individuals often can recover a stolen item simply by snatching it back before the filter can escape. Others keep a few cheap baubles available for the local filter to snatch. Filters are known to have noses for magic, so Items enchanted, sorry, items enchanted with Nistel's magic aura or continuous flame spells often prove irresistible, especially if they are also gaudy. Fortunately, a filter user usually is satisfied with a single prize. So this could be the beginning of an interesting little thing, right? You can have your party adventuring almost anywhere. Think about it for a second. Anywhere. And as they are adventuring, they could be uh, sniped by one of these things, have something cool stolen, and then that leads to sort of a chase, right? Where the party's trying to track down where this thing is and where its lair is on the material plane. Um, that could then lead in turn to other sort of ethereal monsters or magic users of different kinds who might then, you know, be part of a larger story within your campaign. Mm-hmm. 
Ethereal Jaunt. So this is their special abilities. Ethereal Jaunt. An ethereal filter can shift from the ethereal to the material plane as part of any move action and shift back again as a free action. It can remain on the ethereal plane for one round before returning to the material. The ability is otherwise identical with Ethereal Jaunt cast by a 15th level sorcerer. That's the funny thing about 3rd edition D&D. This has a spell-like ability of a 15th level sorcerer, but it's a challenge rating 3 monster. So it's, it's kind of OP in that way, right? If you were thinking, if I told you like, yeah, I'm going to let you have a level 3 rogue or thief, but you can pop in and out at will between the ethereal and, and material plane, that dude would be fierce. The, it would be the most renowned thief of all time, right? So this kind of, it, it's a little bit overpowered. You might want to sort of modulate how much you're using this because it could be pretty brutal um, in terms of like stealing important items or, you know, things that are worth a lot or enchanted weapons or enchanted items from the party. Um, but if you use it as kind of a plot hook, to lure the party into a, a, another locale where this filter has their treasure hoard, that other locale could then be an interesting whole adventure, right? Then maybe, maybe he's in the well outside of the wizard's tower, and then, you know, they, they recover their stolen thing from the filter, the filter escapes, but now they're right outside of this weird ruined tower. So it could be, it, it could be like throwing crumbs to the party to have them follow, you know, to lead to an adventure that you want to run without necessarily railroading them. It, is it a little railroady to steal from them something that they are, you know they're going to want to get back? Sure, but it's not as direct as like, you will go this way. Detect magic. Ethereal filters continuously detect magic as the spell cast by a fifth level sorcerer. A filter can suppress or restart the ability once per round as a free action. So unlimited detect magic unlimited in and out from the ethereal plane is super powerful. Um, and again, this is not a monster that I would use to kill a party. This is not a big bad end guy. This is a, a hook. It's literally just bait to get the party to do something or go somewhere to discover something else that will then lead to your adventure, right? Um, who might employ an ethereal filter? Um, that could be an interesting adventure that could lead to in a campaign, right? So suppose that you had a very powerful wizard or a very powerful sorcerer or a warlock or whatever, some very powerful magic user who is seeking specific things and has brokered a deal with this ethereal filter and basically like hiring a thief to go get these things that, that they need um, for whatever, for some big ritual or just for their own, you know, treasury. They want to they want to hoard all this cool magical stuff. And they've made a deal with the ethereal filter to provide it with something that it wants in return, right? Or maybe they've cast a spell on it and like dominated it. Whatever the case may be, um, using the ethereal filter to get to the party to then bring them to the next part of whatever adventure you're trying to run could be really fun. So I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those things where sometimes... I look back through the older editions of different game books or Dragon magazines, and I find something that's really cool that maybe people don't use a lot. And this is one of those creatures. It's not super powerful. It's not going to like TPK your party, but it can be a great way to hook them into another kind of adventure or scenario or campaign. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little delve back into the old monster manual from third edition uh, for the ethereal filter. If you have not subscribed, please do so and like this video. We appreciate your support. And if you want to go the extra mile, you could visit us at patreon.com slash billallenworld. There are several different tiers that you could choose from to support the channel and the content that we make. Until next time, thank you for watching Monster Monday and happy adventuring.
Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.